The Resident Evil series has had quite the comeback as of lately. Remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3 sparked new interest in the series that not only brought back veterans, but welcomed newcomers as well. Resident Evil 8 or Village takes full advantage of that momentum and brings the series back to its original highs following a gameplay system similar to Resident Evil 4 while continuing on the story set forth with Resident Evil 7. But before we jump into this review, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay up to date whenever I put up another review. With all that said, let's jump into this review starting with story. Resident Evil Village takes place a few years after the events of Resident Evil 7. Spoilers ahead for those of you that haven't played 7 yet. At the end of Resident Evil 7, there were multiple endings you could have gotten where Mia could have lived or died by the end of it. Well, Resident Evil 8 shows you the canon timeline that has her live, and she now finds herself married to Ethan, having a daughter together, and moving to Europe. Life is nice up until things quickly derail when the series regular Chris Redfield appears to interrupt the night. Shortly after, Ethan finds himself in this eerie village filled with these horrifying werewolves who have seemingly wiped out this once bustling village. Sadly, the tall vampire woman poster child of this game's marketing campaign, whether it was meant to or not, isn't on screen for that long. She instead shares the spotlight with a collection of ungodly nightmarish creatures that feel kind of like Scooby-Doo villains as they all have some sort of theme to them, whether it's vampires, werewolves, and so on. The plot vaguely feels familiar to Resident Evil 7, once again focusing on a rescue mission against those that go bump in the night, although this time the theme is a Transylvania village. Despite the similarities, there's a lot of firsts for the series here that were welcome writing changes. I don't want to go too into specifics as that's better left discovered on your own than in the review, but rest assured Resident Evil 8's conclusion is probably one of the more thought provoking ones in recent time. Where you might have gotten accustomed to the slower paced horror theme atmosphere set in the recent Resident Evil remakes, Resident Evil Village or 8 takes a completely different approach. It more falls in line with the heavier action gameplay transition started with Resident Evil 4. It's a lot of scrambling for bullets, quickly crafting items, and frantically running through maze like maps tumbling the bookshelf behind you in hopes of stopping whatever is chasing you. The gameplay formula has different areas of the village controlled by different types of monsters all under this action vignette. More often than not, I'm not slowly pacing through corridors waiting for the next jump scare. Instead, I'm shooting a handful of enemies at once, rushing to gather supplies to make some sort of ammo in the nick of time to fire away. This is a typical gameplay loop that tied in some environmental puzzles that largely were centered in these small sandboxed areas. These felt well thought out, though not all that challenging. Solving the puzzles were pretty straightforward, and never did I have to stop and think about the puzzle to get through them. The bosses on the other hand were very memorable, and although they too didn't require that much thought into solving, they did feel like the cinematic set pieces for this title. I hope this shows where the series is heading in terms of bosses because in comparison to Resident Evil 7, the improvement feels like night and day. Post-game content gives you access to a more challenging run of the campaign, but more interestingly, a mercenaries mode. This has you take on the four stages in the campaign that feels like an arcade mode. This is complete with perks that make this feel much more like a retro arcade spin-off of classic Doom than it does like a Resident Evil game. While it didn't keep my attention for that long, it was a nice post-game distraction. Ultimately, Resident Evil 8 felt like a modern take on Resident Evil 4's gameplay. Its puzzles are interesting, though easy, and its combat is faster, but also less horror focused. Resident Evil Village retains the same first person point of view that was set with Resident Evil 7, while making some interesting improvements to the RE engine. This engine has been powering a handful of Capcom's recent titles, but to see that its full technical showcase with this title is truly remarkable. Texture details feel immensely improved both when up close and with faraway objects. It certainly helps give wider shots of areas this grander sense of scale. One thing that particularly stood out to me was the movement of the characters in conjunction with the camera. It gives this sort of swaying wobble effect, ultimately giving Ethan's point of view a very handheld look. Initially, the effect was a bit jarring, even to the point of giving me a bit of motion sickness. Truth be told, that's actually partially why this review took me a bit longer to finish despite being able to beat this game in about 8-ish hours. However, after some quality time with the game, I was able to adjust to the point of view, but there were some growing pains. In regards to performance, Resident Evil is on a handful of platforms and its performance varies by the platform and even more by the console generation. PlayStation 5 is the console I played this on and it comes in at native 4K resolution, however this is reached through checkerboard upscaling. The frame rate can dip to the low 50 frames per second with ray tracing turned on, though it stabilizes when it's turned off to a more locked 60 frames per second. While ray tracing is generally nice, in this game it's pretty low effort in comparison to other games released so far on this console generation, and for the performance hit, it doesn't seem that completely worth turning on. On PS4 Pro, the performance drops down to 30 frames per second, though this is at an unlocked frame rate, occasionally hitting about 40 frames per second. Resolution here runs at 4K resolution, also achieved through checkboard rendering, though at a lower quality than that of the PS5. The performance mode stabilizes the frame rate reaching 1080p at a locked 60 frames per second, a lower resolution but better performance. 
That brings us to the base PS4, the weakest of Sony's machines running at a native 900p at an unlocked frame rate ranging from 40 to 60 FPS. While the frame rate is high, it's incredibly unstable and not the ideal way to play. It would have been nice to have a locked frame rate option at a higher resolution just to have better frame pacing. On the Xbox side, you can expect to see the Xbox Series X hit 4K resolution also through checkerboard upscaling at an unlocked frame rate, usually hitting around 60 frames per second. On occasion, the Series X does perform ever so slightly better than the PS5, though the difference is very minimal. Once again, I recommend turning off ray tracing for a more stable performance. That only becomes a bigger recommendation with the Xbox Series S, which feels like the odd Xbox in the bunch. The Series S targets a 30 frames per second mark that tends to hover around 35 frames per second with ray tracing turned on and checkerboarded 1440p. Luckily, if you turn off ray tracing, you can get a bit more out of the console, reaching a mostly stable 60 frames per second with the occasional low dip to 50 frames per second. Xbox One S, on the other hand, is the lower tier of the Xboxes that targets 900p native resolution with checkerboard rendering, running at an unlocked frame rate between 30 to 40 frames per second. While it's not the most ideal experience, it's passable if Xbox One S is truly your only way of playing. Resident Evil Village does a great job at crafting an audio landscape that always puts the ambient sound design forward. Every door has a creak to it that varies depending on the type of material it was made out of. I could even hear Ethan's heavy breath as he trenched through the winter snow. While this particular entry in the series didn't have a horror atmosphere all the time, it did at least put an effort to creating a believable soundscape that really put me in the headspace of just trying to survive. Playing on PS5, I do wish this game took a bit more advantage of the dual sense. There's subtle vibrations, sure, but nothing that really feels all that different from playing on the PS4. Having seen how this could be used in a shooter like Returnal, I would have loved to see it used to heighten the suspense in the horror setting. At least the music does a decent job at helping alleviate that. While the music isn't always present, when it does pop its head out, it does a great job at setting the tone for what's to come. Resident Evil Village isn't necessarily the scariest game I've played this year. Heck, I didn't really get scared playing this at all. Instead, Resident Evil 8 feels more like an action game just in a horror-like setting that sets the tone as a horror game, but doesn't really feel like one in practice. With that said, it's not bad by any means, just something more in line with Resident Evil 4 instead of Resident Evil 2 Remake. That's not a bad thing as Resident Evil 4 is arguably the series high point, and having it return to this was great. While there were certainly some highs and lows with the story, it ends up pointing in an interesting direction that gets me excited for the series' future. Thank you so much for watching my review, if you liked the video then let me know with a thumbs up and a comment down below. I love seeing Capcom continue having this renaissance period, it's great competition for the industry and ultimately just a great time to be a gamer. But until the next video, I'll talk to you over on the Discord server, the link is in the description.